Okay. Yeah. So what's the log then? So if I had like log um a hundred, what's base ten? What does that equal? Uh two. Two. Why two? Because it's asking them like what power do you need to make ten a hundred? Yeah. So what power it's essentially answering this question, ten to the power x is a hundred. What's x? Mm. Yeah. So what power do I need to make 10 become 100? That's what that, that says in English. And I know you, you both understand that well. Okay. So what we'll look at next is the, the four log rules. And then in the exam questions they, themselves, they get these get applied. Um, yeah. Just need to demonstrate that you know them. So the first one is uh, this scenario. So we might have log 10. This log 10. What would that be called? So that's the power you need to get from 10 to 10 plus the power you need to get from 10 to 10. So one plus one. Yeah, but what would it equal as a logarithm? Uh, log 20, log 10, log base 10, no. Not like, yeah, log base 10, 20, maybe. 20, what do you say, Ali? Oh, no, 100, 100. Uh, I'd say two log 10. Well, that's true. It's two log ten. There are two log tens there. Yeah, <laughs> put that in brackets. You're right. You're not wrong with that. That's true. There are two log tens. Yeah. So we wanted to write it as a single logarithm without a number in front of it. So log of some number. What would you say it was? Log ten squared. Yeah, log of ten times ten, which is a hundred, or ten squared. Yeah. Or two log ten. But as a single logarithm, it'd be log of a hundred. Yeah. So the first rule of logarithms is that in reverse to the normal rule, that multiplication is addition, this rule is addition is multiplication. So if we're adding two logs together, which have the same base, then we're going to multiply the numbers. And then like you said, uh, log 10 is equal to 1. And log 10 obviously is equal to 1 as well. So one plus one equals two. So that's just a complicated way of saying one plus one is two. <clears throat> We've already established that log of hundred is two above there. So what power do I need to make ten become hundred? Two. Yep. So that all make that scans all makes sense. So if we can add logarithms, we can also take them away. The reverse. So if we had log 100, take away log 10, what would that equal? Uh, well, it should be the opposite, like uh, division instead of multiplication. Right. So um, log 10, 10. Yeah, log 10 base 10, exactly. So uh, here, subtraction is division. It's the reverse of what we're used to with division is subtraction. Again, the bases have to be the same, uh, but subtraction and division. Yeah, so that's the second rule. And in that, we've, we've just written the reverse scenario that two take away one is one. Okay. So there are four rules. Uh, the third rule I don't really consider to be a rule. I just think you're, it's kind of like an obvious fact, but. Um, it's considered to be a rule. So it's what log one is. Yeah, what's log one? <laughs> Any takers? What's log one? Maybe you would <laughs> Not so obvious, not so obvious fact. Right. Okay, so one, what power do I need to make 10 become one? One over 10, maybe. So one over 10 would be not one, no. 10 times one over 10 would be one. It's what power I need. So remember it's the question above, what power do I need to get that to be one? So 10 to the X is one, what's X? What power is needed to get from 10 to 1? So what power would 
would you get if you what would you get if you square root 10? Five? No. Ten to power five is a hundred thousand. Yeah, that's fine. It's less than five. So I give you that, it's less than five. What power you need to get from so this is it's less than one, right? So it's less than one, yeah. yeah. You both know this, so I know you know this. When when we say it, you go, Oh yeah. <laughs> you will, guarantee it. Okay, and the takers. Oh, else there. Let's yeah. imagine that I divide. Um, I've got ten squared over here, and I divide it by ten squared. What does that equal? Is it zero? One. It equals one, yeah. It's going to equal one, but what would it equal as a power? Tenth power, what? Zero. Ah, ten to zero. So, as Rahat just jumped in there and said, it's going to be the answer zero. Because what power do I need to make? Oh. Yeah, there's the reaction I said you'd have. God's time. sake. You know that already, don't you? Mm. Yeah. So it tends to zero as one. Well. So I was bigging it up there saying that this is not a fact. You know, this is something we already know. It tends to the power zero as one. So do we really need an extra rule for it, the logarithms, which says the same thing? What power do I need to make 10 become one? Um, but it's considered the rule as well. Okay, you know, you know that. I know you know that. Where did the inspiration strike from there, Rahat, when you said zero? Uh, I was just a guess. I think I might have heard it somewhere before. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, we've done it about a thousand times. Yeah. Uh, okay, and the fourth final rule is actually the first rule um, again. So actually, Ollie, you said it earlier when you said two log 10. So if I've got a log 10, squared, I can write that as 2 log 10. So log 10 squared is 2 log 10. So in other words, I can bring that power down, or if I've got a number in front of the logarithm, I can take it up and put it yeah. up and do the reverse. Yeah. Right. So why does that work? Well, uh, 2 log 10 means, like we, we saw higher up, that it's log 10 plus log 10, isn't it? Like you noted, um, 2 log 10 is log 10 plus log 10. But that just refers to the first rule again. Log 10 plus log 10 is log of 10 squared, or log 100. So that's why it's the same thing. So it's kind of like reversing the first rule and saying, well, this would give me 10 squared, which is 2 log 10s. Ah, yeah. I can see I can actually bring the power down, and it's the same thing. It's equivalent. Okay, so that's just a very complicated way to number two equals two. That's all I think. And there are four log rules. Okay, so let's have a look at um, the question. Can you see the question? question there. Can you both see that question okay? Yep. Yeah. So this one, it's um, it's quite a good example because it's a student's attempt to solve this equation and it shows the working for what the student has done. And we'll see in part A, it says identify two errors. <clears throat> I just want to take 30 seconds or whatever minute and have a look and see, follow it through <laughs> and see if you can spot the errors. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think it's in the first line. Yeah. Um, basically, because the subtraction rule is like division, um, yeah. it's basically 2 log 2x divided by log, um, log 2 square root x. But yeah. because square root x is um, irrational, you have to rationalize it. Well, it is a, it is a rational. Well, uh, we don't know it's rational because x could be a positive a square number. So if x was right. Right. suddenly it's not uh, right. number, is it? So we don't know that. Okay. But you, you, the, what do you think, Rahat? Um. So what I've gone so far. I've tried doing it myself, and I've got the point where log base two x squared minus log base two x uh, a half. Now, if I was to use the um, the one of the rules is if you minus two numbers with the same base, you get division, isn't it? So x squared divided by a half, maybe x x squared divided by x the power of half. I'm thinking. Okay, um, what, but what is the error? Okay, so you're doing it, but that's fine. The question is, what's the error? So let's oh, sorry. stick to that. <laughs> Subtraction law, so log. Hmm. I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure how they got on the x over uh, okay. square root x using okay. the subtraction law. So I'm guessing it's something there because I don't recognize it, but I wouldn't know. Okay. Well, all right. So we got um, the two logs taken away from each other, and we said that subtraction is division. So they've divided the two things. So that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. Divided the two things from each other. Yeah, so they've got x divided by root x. Like before, we had an example. We had. Oh, okay. Yep. Sorry. Uh, we had um, hundred take away ten, so it's hundred divided by ten. Mm -hmm. Here it's x to take away uh, log x take away log root x. So it's x divided. Don't by... don't they need to have the same? Um, but there's a two in front of the the original log x. So is there something you need to do about that before you? Right, exactly. So that's the that's the error. Yeah. See, because when he divides them, he ends up with two log x over root x. But that's not true for the second log. It doesn't have a two on it. It's log squared, isn't it? So log squared divided by um, square root x. So we should, that should just give x, right? Right. Exactly. So the first thing you should do is use the power rule to get it. The x, the two, the fourth rule we just did. Is to put the right. That's what I should do. <laughs> you should, before doing anything, because um, if we if we just take away, it, it doesn't make sense because you're trying to take our log from two log. So you need to make it log take away log. That's the rule. Log of this take away log of that. So the bases are the same. So that's fine. But the two in the front is the problem. So log squared x squared divided by. Back. Before we do that, what's the other problem? What's the other thing that's wrong? There's something else that's wrong here. Uh, looks like you got that subtract uh, that division wrong. No? Yeah, oh, I, I totally agree. 
No, x x divided by root x is root x. That's true. Yeah, because what do you need to multiply root x by to get x? Of root x, don't you? Yeah. So that's fine. So two log squared root x equals three. Yeah, two log. And then he brings that two over. So you get log x to the power log x uh, square root x to the power x equals three. But then he says x equals x squared equals nine. So he's got he's he's brought the two up afterwards, yeah. Yeah. So that gets rid of the square root, so he's got x. Right. Mm -hmm. That's okay, that's all right. Because he's brought two up, he squared it, that's okay. So that's all right so far as well. So the other, that only leaves this last bit. So x, he says x is equal to nine. So what power is needed to get from base two to nine? No, sorry, what power is needed to get from base two to three? That's no, what the question is asking, right? essentially put into English. So not, that means... That's not what the log says. That is that is not what the log says. This is what... And power. they say what power is needed to get from 2 to 3, and that should be x. Oh, no, sorry. 3 is the power needed to get from 2 to what x is. That's what it's asking. That's what it's saying, isn't it? Yep. So how would you rearrange that? And Okay. Well... You just said it. Three is the power that you put on two to get x. So, yeah. So, what's that? Three times three, so three squared, right? No, that's you said. That's the other way around. You just said it there. That's two is the power that you put on three, which is what he said, and that's wrong. Two is the power you put. So, is it three is the power you need to get from two to x? So that means it's two cubed and not three cubed. Sorry, not three squared. Exactly. Right. Isn't it the reverse way? Yeah. So what power do I need to make two to become x? Three. So two to the power of three is x. The answer is eight. The answer should be eight. Yeah. And if he'd done it correct up to this stage, would you? Know? <coughs> so there have been okay. two problems. One is the problem of he's, he's used a subdivision law. That's okay. But he's used it. In the wrong situation because the two logs aren't one log, one log, but two log take away one log. Okay. He then misinterpreted what a logarithm is, saying two to the power of three, saying three to the power of two rather than two to the power of three. Okay. There are two errors. So that's what we're, the two errors that we're not about to make when we do it. So um, I'll, I'll have a run through it now. So it's uh, 2 log 2x minus log base 2 root x is 3. Okay, so. So the first step is we can't take away, we'd like to take away the logs, I'll divide them, but we can't until I put that 2 up. So I'm going to use the fourth rule and put that two up to x squared. <laughs> Minus log root x is three. Um, then I'm going to divide. So I've got a log of x squared over root x is three. <coughs> Is that okay so far? Yeah. So it's a, it's a subtraction. So <laughs> you okay there, Rahab? Yeah, just some dust. Okay. So log. So we've got log x squared over root x, and then um, we need to decide. Okay, what we're going to do with that? So um, yeah, if you're coughing your head off, just you can mute it. I don't know if you know how, but you can mute it. Oh, okay. So I'll, okay. Do, I'll do that. Just for future. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Unless you're done, leave it on. Okay, because then you can tell me. Um, x squared divided by root x, then what's that? Um, it's basically 2 minus um, half. Very good. In the so that'll be what? 
but you're taking away minus a half. Yeah. Oh no, you're taking. Sorry. Yeah. So it would be a, a three over two. Very good. Yeah. So x to the power three over two is three. Okay. And then we want to we want to solve for x is so. <laughs> What will be the next step? So it's saying that x is the power needed to get from two. No, x, the power of three over two is the power needed to get from two to three, right? Say that again. X is the power needed. X three over two is the power need needed to get from two to three. That's no, what we're saying. That's not what I love. No. What power do I need to make two become X? Ah, yeah. So, so three is the power needed to get from two to X three over two. Yep. Okay. So, what power is needed to get from two to three? Sorry, no. Two to the power of three equals X. Oh, uh, x is three right. over two. Okay. That's it. That's the thing. Yeah. So two to the power three is x to three over two. Okay. Which you could just write next. You could just go two cubed, which is eight, is x to three over two. Yeah. What power do I need to make two become x to three over two? Three. So that means that two to the power three is that. So you could just write that next. You could just say x to three over two. And that's fine. Uh, then it's a bit of a horrible uh, thing to do to find what x is, but that's what you could do. An alternate route would be to bring the power back down again. Like that. Yeah. And then um, just rearrange it. So you, you, you times by two, divide by three. Which is two. Hmm. So that's the final answer, two. Well, you want to know what X is? What's X? So I did that other method, which was two, so log two x three over two equals three so i rewrote that as two uh power three equals three if it uh, equals x three over two so eight equals x three over two so eight divided by three over two should equal x was that the right method to use so uh sorry say that again i was got i got sidetracked Go on, say again. So, so log base two x three over two equals three so that means two cubed equals to x three over two. So that means eight is equal to x three over two. Yeah. And that means eight divided by three over two is equal to no, you can't do that, can you? Ah, that's where it went wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a bit weird. Okay. I know it was skewed at the start of the end there. So that's that's time, is it? That you, when you square root it and then cube it, it gives eight. That's what we're looking for. Right? Because that's what that big thing does. The three over two here. Looking for a number that when you cube it and square root it, or when you square root it and cube it, it gives eight. Yeah. That's a bit of a hard thing to imagine. So that's why you can take this alternate route and just rearrange it and make and say log two, log base two x is two. What must x be? So what power? So log mean? base two x is two. Yeah. So what's x? So how come log base, to, so you rearrange that to give three over two log squared log base two x equals three. And then you've, from there, you've gone from. Hmm. Yeah, multiply so by I've, two, which gets rid of the two, but that would make six on the right hand side. And then divided by three. Which oh, means, okay. Sorry, you, uh, you can do that. Just of course, yeah. take this three over two over. Yeah, it's just algebra, isn't it? Okay. So the of this equals three, then this thing equals two. 
It must, yeah, log, let's think about it the other way. Yeah, the way I like to think about it is more, more intuitive. If three halves times <coughs> one is two, is three, yeah, then this must be equal to because three times two divided by two cancels out the twos. Mm -hmm. yeah. So essentially, what this last part is saying is that law two is the power needed to get from two to x, right? Right. So, so four. So it's four, exactly. So x is equal to four. So if we think about is that true, if we put it back into here, so four to power three over two. So square root of four is two, and then if you cube it, you get eight. So yeah, that works. And one last thing regarding that uh, x squared over uh, root x. Sorry, I didn't bring it up before, but how exactly do you get 3 over 2? Okay, yeah. Um, Ali, do you want to explain that? So can you say again? So how do you get from x squared over <clears throat> square root x to 3 over 2? x squared over... Over root x and have... Uh, we did that and we got three over two. So how's that work? Well, x squared divided by square root of x. Is that what you're on about? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just um because the square root of x is equivalent to like x to the power of a half. And then division, you're just taking away the powers. So it'll be x squared take away a half. Oh, okay. Then... So you just rearrange that. So that's x squared equals two x the power of a half. And so that's two divided by a half, essentially. What's the round? Do you know about this? What's what's division? Uh, minus. Yeah. So we're gonna do two. Take a minus one. a half. Okay. What's two minus That's a half? Three over two. Yeah. Well, one and a half, isn't it? Which is three over two. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> you know. Makes sense. Yeah. So that gives us that. Then I, we've got two options, which is try and guess the number that is eight and has been cubed and square rooted a bit fiddly. So that's why I said, let's go that way. Bring the power down, shuffle the three halves over or figure out what log X must equal to. So log X must be equal to two since three halves <coughs> times three, whichever way. And then uh, if log X is two, what is two squared for? Right. What power do I need to make two become Four, two. So that makes sense. Yeah. So if x was four, and if x is four, we can then put it back into this original question and say, you know, if I cube it and square root it, does it give eight? Or if I square root it, then cube it, does it give eight? So if I cube it, we do four cubed. At first, that is equal to sixty-four. Square root of sixty-four, okay. eight. Okay. Or if I do square root of four, which is two, and then cube it. I get eight. So it doesn't matter which order I do those things in. We'll get that result. Okay. Any questions on on that, guys? I'm good. You good? Thank you. Yeah. So um so we should reiterate that the two errors were. He ignored the two, he or she, the student, ignored the two. Then um, ignoring the two got to the stage of log x is three and then did, then did the logarithm the wrong way by, instead of saying two cubed is eight, he said three squared is nine. To do it correctly, we want to put the two up there, divide the powers, so subtract the powers because we're dividing them. Um, then I... We just need to figure out what x is. So the way I did it was I brought the three halves down and then figured out that log x is actually two and therefore x is four. Yeah. Cool. So that was um, that one. And then the next one I want to look at um, is a bit of a longer question, but I just want to look at part A. So one of the things you're expected to know is that we can 
um, have a straight line in terms of logarithms. <clears throat> right. So the equation of this, uh, the resting heart rate of a mammal is modeled by this equation where M is the mass of the animal and P and Q are numbers we don't know, constants. And because it's to the power of something, that is not going to be a straight line. It's going to be um, a curve. It's going to be curvy. If it's power two, power three, whatever Q is, doesn't matter what. If it's not one, it's going to be a curve. So to make it a straight line, um, we take logarithms and this reduce, and we can take the power down, and that gets rid of the power, which means that it'll be a straight line. So you're asked to do it in this one. Uh, given that the, the line meets the vertical axis at 2.25 and has a gradient of minus 0.235, so there are two things we need for a straight line, the gradient and the cut or intercept. Yeah. And these two values. Find what P and Q are. But in the original equation, H is P M to the power Q. All right. <clears throat> So you have this equation h equals p and the power q, p and q are constants, uh, and this equation is is a model for the the resting heartbeat of a mammal. Yeah, uh, right. and the land meets the vertical uh, log ten h axis at two point two five and has a gradient of minus zero point two three five. But into three significant figures, the values of p and the values of q. Yeah. Okay. So is this going to be in the y equals mx plus c format, or is it going to be in this h equals pmq format? Oh, yeah, good. Well, what have we got? Straight line or not? We've got a straight line, yeah. So y equals mx plus c. Okay. So I'm just making a note. So we've got that um, log n h is 2.25, and uh, the gradient is um, minus 0.235, okay. On the y-axis is log 10h, and on the x-axis is log 10m. Okay, I'm just making a note of these, and then uh, I'll switch over to Scribbler. Okay, so there we go. So there are, there's our scenario. We've got a straight line, y plus c. Mm. Uh, but everything's kind of got different variables. But we've still got the two things, gradient and the cut. So we can replace the the equation, y plus mx plus c, with those things. So y will be log 10h, because that is on the y-axis, on the graph. And m is minus 0.235. x is log you know, on the axis, that's what it said, log 10m, plus c, c is 2.25, because that's the intercept. So I'll just color code that. So y, we said, is log 10h from the graph. x is log n, so that's that x there. And then we've got the gradient. So all combined those four facts together to generate y equals mx plus c, but just in terms of logarithms. Okay. And the question is, what is m and q? Right. What is m and what? Let's have a look at that question. Yeah. Uh, p and q. Sorry. What is p? And q? So how do we relate this uh, y equals mx plus c equation to the h equals m p m q equation? Because there's no p or q in this equation. Oh, yeah, exactly. There's no p and q, but they will appear as if they're magic. So what's happened is that the curve that was, that was before logs have operated on that curve and it's generated a straight line. Because if you take a logarithm of something that's got a power, you can bring the power down. Okay. 
this is the reverse scenario is that we've got the information for the line. And what we're going to do is reverse it and figure out what the equation was before logs have been taken on it. So what you do is just use the, the rules of logarithms. So the first thing we can do, which is nearly always the first thing, is we can put that number as a power on the M. So I get log 10 M minus to the power minus 0.2. Okay, so that's reminiscent of the previous question where that was the first thing they did. That's the first thing that we're going to do. So we put the power, they put the number up as a power to that logarithm. Um, and that's equal to log 10 H. Okay. Now we're trying to get to a stage of H equals, yeah, H equals PM to the Q. All right. But at the moment, we've got log H. That's what we've got. Right. So we need to get rid of that logarithm because that's not going to, the left hand side needs to be H, not log H. Okay. So here, what we do is just employ the log rule. So the log rule says, what power do I need to make 10 become H? And that's the thing to the right hand side. So to make 10 become H, I need to write 10 to the power of all this. Mm -hmm. And that'll become H. So the next line is H is equal to 10 to the power of that. And the numbers aren't very nice here, all the decimals. Is that okay so far? Because that's a little bit of a fizzy bit. It's the same idea 10 to the power of what makes H? That. 10 to the power of that makes H. So we've got half the equation sorted because we've got the H. <laughs> but the right hand side's a right mess at the moment, but the left hand side, got it. Okay. So, and then on the right hand side, we're going to just employ um, some indices and log rules because what we want to do is get PM to power Q. So um, we, we revert to multiplication being addition. So we can rewrite the second side as 10 to the power log m minus 0 0.235 times 10 to the power 2.25. Because if I had those things times together, I could add them, which is what's directly above it, because multiplication is addition. So 10 to the power log m to the minus 0 0.235 times 10 to the power 2.25 would equal those two ads together, which is what's above it. So I'm just reversing that process and splitting them off and saying that's 10 to the power that, that's 10 to the power that, their time is by each other. Cool. Okay. Now the final uh, bit is that we need to get rid of this. Um, we need to have m to the q down from inside that power of 10 because we want m to the power q at the moment it's 10 to the power of log m to the power you know it's it's kind of it's in the power itself we need to get it out of there so there's a trick we can pull which is um we're going to completely get rid of all of that in one go just get rid of it and write it the answer will be written as m to the power minus 0.235 times 10 to the power 2.25. Okay. This is why I picked out this question because I think, I think that's a bit of a hard thing to do to realize that's what you do here. That because what happened, what's kind of two things kind of happening. We've got 10 to the power something, but in that power is a logarithm with base 10. So they, they're opposites. And so they cancel out. I'm just left with m to the power minus 0.235. But what's so going with 20 log 20 power m, same rule applies. You can just cancel it out or 30 log uh, 30 to the power log 30. 
So yeah, same rule. Base, exactly, yeah, phones the same base. So I'll give you an example of numbers to show that's the case. So if I said 10 to the power log 10 of 100, what's log of 100? 10. No, 2. 2, yeah, exactly. So that becomes 10 squared, right? Because it's log of 100 is 2. So 10 squared is what? 100. So the thing that's inside this logarithm ends up being the answer. So all of that, just like in this example of the n, disappears. We just end up with the thing inside the logarithm. So in this scenario, because of, that's what's inside the logarithm, it's the same thing. Okay, okay. so now you have h equals m uh, minus 0 0.235 times 10 Oh, 2.35. 2.25. Yeah, exactly. So that's so now we can figure out from that format what P and Q are. So P will be, uh, let me do it in different color yet again. So M to the Q, there's our Q. That must, Q must be equal to minus 0 0.235 because it's M to the power of that. And this is multiplied by M to the Q. So that's P. Okay, so you rearrange that. You can write that as ten our two point three uh two five, yeah, times m our uh, minus zero point two three five. So the yeah. final answer is you're left with a p equals ten our two point two five, yep. and q power. So which is q is minus m. No, hold on one second, sorry. Q is equal to zero point, just minus zero point two three five. Okay. Yeah, the power exactly. So, um, this is actually a very common pattern in taking logarithms. So the powers come down, and the p has become that number there. So if you take, if you took the logarithms of this thing now, it would revert back to the original straight line. And so therefore, because of that, it becomes a gradient, and the intercept are cut. Yeah. That's what this question is driving at. Given these numbers, 2.25 and minus 1.235, and surprise, surprise, this becomes Q, and then 10 to the power of that becomes uh, P, because it's log 10. Because, because this side has been reduced to log 10, but to log 10, it, to revert it back to what it was before, is 10 to the power of that. Mm -hmm. And the gradient has come about because it was a power before which, been, which has been brought down which makes it mx put the power back up x to the m it's going to be that's going to be the power though it's a bit confusing because of using m in the thing but for whatever it was if it was uh x to the power two and you the gradient of the straight line we take logs would be two that's all it's saying so in the next in the next section we'll do some examples on that and demonstrate that. Um, and then the rest of it was away from logarithms for this question. This is quite a common question. Um, you just need to be familiar with that you can take a curve and by taking logarithms generate a straight line out of it. And of course that straight line will have a gradient and a cut. This is the reverse scenario where you've got the straight line and you're trying to figure out what the, the power is where what the equation was. So was there ever like a question where you're given h equals p m q and then you're asked to find the uh, the straight the equation of the straight line using h yeah. equals p m q? Yeah, you could have h is equal to fifteen m squared, right? And then from that you find the straight line. How would you do that? You take logs from both sides. Just the opposite of what we've done. We've undone the logarithms by doing ten to the power. So if we take logs of both sides. That would, we could have, then we'd have log hit 10 h on the left hand side on the right hand side we'd have log of 10 pm to the q or whatever the number is and we can bring the power down and that would generate a straight line okay that's it that's as far as you need to know well that's as far as you're expected to know not need to know expected to know logarithms wise so the rules of logarithms then their application to straight lines and also solving problems such as this one, how to do it in the correct order. 
solve loop for x. And we can show you do it in the right order. And those two questions are from the previous few years exams. So you can expect something in that vein uh, this year. Cool. Any uh, further questions on that? I don't think so. Don't think so? No, cool. Okay, I'll stop recording there.